Brittany Cloudy. I train out of Houston, Texas, originally from St. Louis, Missouri, and I represent the United States of America. Mm. My thoughts on my opponent is she's just starting out, and I'm very seasoned in this sport, and I'm going to show her what experience looks like. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm exactly where I need to be and exactly where I'm going, and my eyes are on that belt, and I look forward to uh, making a big splash in the beginning of this promotion and being the first champion. I see myself with my hand raised by using my hand, so best believe that is going to be a lot of uh, punching and kicking, but ultimately my hands are going to bring home the win. Volám sa Veronika Smolková, pochádzam zo Slovenska, z mesta Revúca. A svojej superke si myslím, že je veľmi kvalitná, je vysoká, má dlhé ruky, má dobrý boxing, ale ja verím, že budem lepšia v tom, že mám proste bojovné srdce a cítim, že som sa preto to narodila. Bude to pre mňa znamenať neskutočne veľa. Je to veľký krok vpred, otvorí mi to veľa možností do sveta, tak ja verím, že tak ako ju môžem ukončiť v postoji, tak isto som sa pripravovala na to, aby som ju ukončila či na zemi, či hoci ako proste. Hlavne nech vyhrám, uvidíme ako. So we are just waiting now, anticipating Veronika Sweetheart Smolkova making the walk. Now this is a fighter. A fighter that will be the first one to have fought on all three UFLs. So she fought Zurina Touré in her first fight. That was a fight of the night. The second fight was up against uh, Kayla Yontif. That again, a barn burner of a fight. This is a young lady with only a small amount of experience. But what she shows in spades, Benson, is the heart of a fighter. That is something that a lot of coaches say you can't train. And when you see it just come alive in the cage, it's something when you're in the corner, I'm sure it gives you confidence, right? Uh, for sure. Seeing, seeing that kind of heart when it's on, when it's on display is a, is a huge deal because you cannot teach that no matter what people say you can't really sh necessarily show somebody the way to get hard they gotta have it or they don't and Frank you know this as well as anybody sometimes you can have all the technique the skill and everything like that but the guts to be able to dig deep and do that that is something you I mean particularly have found in your career we took back at some of the amazing wars that you've had it's either in you or it isn't right that's true you know you're gonna go out and have that dog in you or not and but right now, though, it is a situation that hopefully Smokova doesn't have to use the dog in her and fight as hard as it's be probably required of her. If she just makes some technique changes, she's a really good striker, very powerful. People stand in front of her, grappling, well-rounded. The only knock that I've ever had on her is that she doesn't move her head much. And fighting Brittany, who's a boxing background, phenomenally long jab, that could be a bad recipe. So it's interesting. If she can make and move the head, I think she has a good shot for winning tonight. Yeah, and Benson, you had a chat with some of these two ladies. And even before when we talked about them, you identified the two different styles. And just break it down for us technically what the difference is between what, what, what Muay Thai does bring you in the cage, but also, like Frank was pointing out, some of the things it might leave you vulnerable to. Yeah, uh, for sure. As a uh, good boxer versus uh, maybe more of a, a Muay Thai background, Muay Thai pedigree, uh, you, you want to use that. Brittany wants to use her uh, reach to make sure she, like uh, Frank said, establish that jab, use that jab. Muay Thai, maybe her kicks will be able to negate that reach and she'll be able to kick, kick at the same distance she's, able, she's uh, gonna get jabbed at. So we'll see if she's able to use her kicks to equal out that distance game. Well, we shall wait, we shall see. One of our Grand Prix semi-finalists is inside the cage. It's now time we are set and ready to welcome her opponent. So here we go, Brittany, the quiet storm, cloudy. And here she comes, Brittany, cloudy, earned her spot here in the semi-finals when she beat and put into retirement Claudia Zamora. We know just how tough, tough to Claudia Zamora is, but Frank, that fight, Brittany, at 11 days notice, 11 days. And she was even slightly concerned about that as far as the cardio for the fight. She showed just how athletic she was, just how prepared and she, she lent on those skills. This camp though, she says, look, you're gonna see a different animal, a full camp where I've got confidence in that cardio, where I can push myself knowing that I, knowing what I can do within the cage. 
So what are you expecting, Frank, from this one? Well, you know what? She had such good footwork in the last fight. She fought a three-round war against an opponent that wouldn't stop coming after her. And that's what allowed her to showcase that beautiful jab. And the fact she moved that way for with 11 days' notice, I'm really looking forward to what she could do now because for her, like I said, for Smokola, it's moving her head. For, for, uh, for uh, Cloudy, it's her lead leg. As a boxer, are you able to fire off your jabs? Your cross? Are you able to fire your shots off and protect your lead leg against a Muay Thai stylist? So I think that's gonna come down to having good cardio and constantly moving in and out. Now listen, let's, let's take this walkout in for a minute. First of all, what a walkout tune. Now Benson, you had an iconic walkout tune. And I've got to tell you, uh, one of my daughter's favorite songs. So there you go. So I, yeah, uh, yeah. I hear it in my house quite a lot. But you see Brittany coming out here, she's loose, she's relaxed, she's yeah. enjoying the moment. I mean, it's such a, a personal thing, right, that walkout, what, what it means to you, what it sets you up for. What are you taking from seeing this? Uh, for sure. I, I think uh, talking to Brittany yesterday, she's also a uh, mental health therapist. So she's big on the, being in the proper mindset, mindset mentally. And uh, you can see in her walkout, she, I think she's in the mindset she wants to be at, being loosey-goosey, being able to relax, being able to enjoy the walkout song. I think that's... Uh, speaks well for her uh, going into this fight, I think, for sure. And come on, you must have busted a few moves to this dance soon in the dance floor. Oh, come great on, song, come great on. song. You, it's you. early in the night, but I feel like we need to start moving our shoulders, right? Yeah, there might be some clips of me around <laughs> dancing this song. <laughs> uh, so Frank, you can see automatically, even before she's in the cage, anatomically, she's longer, she's taller. What's Small Cobra got to do to get inside that? Well, make her miss. She's gonna have a hard time coming across fire if she stands on that line. Straight down the middle, she's gonna have a hard night. If she can move off angle, come forward, moving her head, and then make damage. I think chopping her legs, working the body, will be really the key to victory for her. So let's get this one underway to do it. Let's hand it to our a ring announcer of the night, Mr. Michael Vale. Let's get the action started. Our first bout is the semifinal in the UFL Bantamweight Grand Prix. Scheduled for three five minute rounds. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. She stands five feet four inches tall, official weight 135.8 pounds. She has a professional record of two wins, one loss. From Slovakia, please welcome Veronica Sweetheart Smolkova. And now her opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. She stands five feet nine inches tall, official weight 135.4 pounds. She has a professional record of five wins, one loss, fighting out of St. Louis, Missouri. Let's welcome Brittany Quietstorm Cloudy. So we're looking at the tail of the tape Real ahead of this bout. Cloudy five and one, two and one, Veronica Smolkova. There is the difference in height, five foot nine versus five foot four. The reach also on the side of Brittany Cloudy. This fight scheduled for three five minute rounds. This is the Bantamweight Grand Prix. This is the first fight of UFL three. Let's get it underway. Cage door is closed. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Benson, Smooth Henderson, and Frank Mir calling the action here. A touch of the gloves, Smolkova in the blue gloves. Oh. Oh, look at this Cloudy coming forward fast, hard and fast. I, I love the starts of fights, seeing how someone it's, it's, uh, starts their game plan. What is their game plan? You can see Brittany's game plan was to come forward and start throwing punches right away. Now she's confident with that jab cross going right down the middle. And you can see right off the bat, Smokova's not going to move her head. She's eating those shots. She fades back a little bit, but there's no her defense basically is take a couple shots and hopefully she hits you back harder. She's firing back, which is great, but she's taking some abuse on the way in. When you look back at the two fights they had previously in this, especially Smolkova, on the back foot is where Zurina, uh, Zurina Ture had most of the success, and it feels like Brittany might have watched that, Benson, and, and is, that's what she's trying to push and force that backward step coming from uh, Smolkova. That's smart. I've only seen one, one kick so far from Smolkova, but there it is, another one. She might need more of those. Yes, that's what's going to be what I think she does do to win. T attack that lead leg and rip it yes. off. Yes. This is a fight, though, early on, just one minute into round number one. And this is where the coaches of Smolkova thought she might have some success with that Muay Thai background, and in particular the clinch work, Frank. There's a lot that she can manipulate from here, but Brittany looks so strong. Especially the situation where you're gonna fight a girl who's probably not gonna go to take you down. It kind of changes a little bit. When I lock up with somebody, I go, hey, you wanna keep this striking? I don't have to worry about as much because if you catch my knee, you're not looking for the takedown, so it allows you to unload more with your knees and elbows and striking, because they're gonna basically stay in that position and fire back. And there was no real takedown attempt for Smolkova yet, but she has had two 
leg chip attempts, and you, you, you kind of got to count those as, as actual real takedown uh, uh, takedowns attempts because she's trying to get the uh, fight to the ground. She's eating some shots, and now it's like, oh hey, I actually don't want to be here. Let's try to get this to the ground. Yeah, she's showing her intentions that she doesn't isn't being stubborn. You see some of those people like, I'm gonna prove a point. I'm the better striker. She came forward. She looks like she wants to make it a ground fight. She just doesn't have the, the technique hasn't landed for her yet. Yeah. Oh, a little elbow off the cage there. Now, these early exchanges, Benson, when you get a feel of your opponent, you've been in there many times. What does that give you when you can sort of size them up as well as, you know, feel their strength? Once you can feel some of their power, you need a couple of good big shots. Like, okay, I don't have a whole lot to be worried about. I ate that nice shot. Jab. That was a good shot. That was a nice jab. Oh. Stiff jab. Oh. And then and sometimes it can relieve a little bit of pressure. Like, you're thinking, oh, early on, they got a lot of power. I ate their good big shot. I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still okay that can sometimes give you a little bit of confidence and that looks bad there for smoke over see how she's fading with her hands forward it doesn't look good to the judges it almost look like you're pawing out there it, it, i understand it's a long frame defense she's using but because of the motion she's doing it it looks bad as far as she's in more trouble than what she might be for sure i did like that teep to the midsection they're just trying to keep britney at range britney's so good at finding the range early on right benson yeah for sure she, she she's uh established her distance she's established her range Smokova needs to keep those teeps to the body like you mentioned and those leg kicks she needs to keep that distance well, away until she's able to get inside and the other thing that's britney's doing really well you know this fight when we step back sometimes i get too close to the cage it throws your stance off you don't have the right footing you can't get your back leg in the proper position so it makes fighting more difficult to put someone on the against the cage in that striking range oh. I oh, do wait. think uh, Veronica is getting a little more comfortable. She doesn't seem quite as rushed, quite as defensive. And maybe that also is because uh, Brittany's not throwing quite as many punches as the, the first two minutes of the, of the fight. Brittany brought it as well, right, for the first three and a half minutes. She really did. I didn't expect that. I'm like, you know what? With your skill set, your athletic ability, let's just walk up on the girl, get close, and stay right at the end of that jab, in and out, in and out. It's what we saw with Claudia Zamora, yes, right? Calculate it, just get, yeah. The, she almost kind of gave up her reach advantage because every time she do that one, two, she was having success, but she comes in, she stays there, and that's when Smokola has success firing back at her because Brittany's kind of on the hot plate. She throws and just stands right there and, and, and negates her length. Oh, and now we're seeing them exchange shots here. A furious first round between these two. Brittany had a, a nice uh, attempt at an elbow over here against the other side of the cage. Oh, there it is, is. There, there it is. is. I was wondering if she was going to go back to it. Yes, she did. Who says this is your first time on the bike, eh, Benson? Come on. Yeah, that's beautiful. And if she happens to throw that while Smokova's firing in, yeah. that's one of the worst things to do is to run into a shot. Final 30 seconds of round number one, and I'd love to see the stats on the output. Oh, another elbow. Oh, another elbow. Again. Another elbow. I like, too, how uh, Brittany's uh, going to the body. Every couple of shots, she's going to that yeah. straight jab to the body. It's a great idea. I mean, how often do you even see any guys actually throw a cross to the body? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, it was just... Oh, there we go. Nice connection with that right hand from Smolkova. Finishing strong in round number one. The Britney's what? cardio is unreal. Smolkova's fighting hard, but just there's a difference in posture of the two different energy outputs right now. There's a lot of heart on Smokova's part, no doubt. But Brittany is looking at I me. Mean, that, that was a hard pace, and she looks like she barely broke a sweat. But Brittany comes from that athletics background. Track was the first sport she got into. She somehow find the, found herself falling in love with jiu-jitsu and then, you know, taking the leap into full fighting. Yeah. But the background is all about that cardio, that athleticism, and she's got it in spades. Yeah. I think oh. she, sh she showed a, a lot of her uh, athleticism being explosive, which she yeah. attributes to her track background, learning how to be explosive. A quick twitch fibers. Yes. Talk us through this, Frank. That's that elbow that Benson pulled out. He saw it before we did. Rising straight up in the middle, super quick. But it takes speed to move in because you're hitting with a short distance weapon. She fired it again, straight up. And awesome first round. I mean, and, and the thing is, is great first round. Smokova didn't really have a great answer besides firing back across in a hook to get Brittany off of her. And when you're fighting somebody and you can't control when they come in or not to get them off you, it's very fatiguing. I'd like to see Smokova go, Smokova go back to the inside. There yeah, it is. There it is. I'd yeah. like to see that a little bit more and then her uh, teep kicks. Nice. Good, good kick counter. Yeah, Smokova comes from a, a very well, well renowned gym, Dracula gym over there in Bratislava. Phenomenal nice. Muay Thai background and base. Those inside, outside leg kicks, bread and butter for those guys and Brittany girls. Brittany going for the takedown. Oh, you know, trying to be unpredictable. We're trying to wall free from a smoke over. Wow. Oh, look at that. 
That was some power. Got the under with wow, it. Wow, she lifted her feet up <laughs> off the ground. I mean, I <laughs> It does look like Smokova might be a little bit of the stronger fighter, though. She's able yeah. to turn Brittany there pretty easily. Deceptively strong. I've seen it in some of her amateur fights as well. She's able to manhandle bigger fighters. And she uses her head really well in, in that position as, as well. Yeah, she has that thick neck and traps. You can tell. Like, I mean, really, honestly, I know she's a Muay Thai specialist. It was her history. But when I first saw her, I was like, oh, that looks like a college wrestler right there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> she's just missing the ears. One minute down, round number two. Oh, again, exchanging. The output is so high for these two. You know, another thing I like that Brittany does that shows a lot of maturity for a person with her amount of fights is when she does take a shot from Smokova, she's not trying to get it right back. Sometimes it's like you take, you know, there's a nice slip cross, but there's other times where she gets hit and it's not like, okay, I'll go to the body, I'll work the, the legs again. I'll keep the game plan going. That is such a big tell of an experienced fighter or a younger fighter eat a shot and you want to get back right away. Oh, I got to yeah. get that back right away. You know, take your time, calm, calm down. You'll get it back, but you don't have to rush for it. That's so hard, especially, you might be able to do it in the gym, but you're in the crowd, all of a sudden you hear me, ooh, and I got you just, the <laughs> ego in you just is dying now, you know? It takes a long time to come overcome that. Pushing forward is Smokova. She's getting much more forward movement, getting Brittany back to the cage right in front of Mazia. Oh, nice work from Smokova. Those are the best shots of the fight landed by far. What's it like, Benson, when you've got someone coming at you who's taking your best shots, who just keeps coming forward? Mentally, that must fatigue you as well, right? Mentally, it's very tiring. Mentally, it's so tiring when you can land your best shots and they're landing, and then they're just not backing away. They're not circling away from you oh, when wow. they're walking towards Look, she you. She got the wrist behind her back. Yeah. That's a oh, long trauma. arm. Oh, yeah. That's a long arm. I've got to be honest with you. In the gym, if someone locks that up, they're always on the ground. You, you, that's a, a two-on-one around the back like that, that's a takedown every time. I, I don't know what she did to miss it. Two minutes, 25 of round number two. This action-packed first semi-final here. We have nine more semi-finals. Plus, some exciting feature bats here at UFL 3. Well, you know, the flight slowed down pace, but good for Brittany, because oh. she was taking some shots there. Right hand connected there from Small Cobra. Right, Brittany's going back to the jab a little bit. Hey, I need to land that jab again. Yeah, she just... Yep, the jab, she does a great job of the right hand. She's followed it, and that's why she becomes a target for the fake uh, shots. Veronica. Oh, another one. And Brittany's gone to single shots now, Benson. At the start, she was flurrying those combinations. Now it's just kind of throw the single shot out, right? I uh, agree. At first, it was punches and bunches, and now she's going to that jab, jab. One, two. Is that jab, a sign of just jab, trying to one, make two. some space to get some air, so yeah. you know, get your feet back under you? You know, the expression, when in doubt, jab it out. Like, as a fighter, like boxing especially, they'll say, hey, when you're stunned, tired, or fatigued, go back to the base just to jab. You can keep in your stance, don't extend yourself, and gather your wits. But the thing is, oh. though. Look at this. Oh. Big shots there from Smokova. Well, Brittany, I heard. I think she's so used to being a taller fighter and using her feet to get out of range that she doesn't really have head movement for herself. And she's taking some hellacious shots this round. I like the fake takedowns from Brittany. That was skillful, right? It up. Yeah. They caught me off guard. I was like, what is she doing? Oh, that's a fake shot. Level change to an uppercut hook. I was like, wow. Yeah. And stunned and fatigued while she did that. That's so... Oh, big, big shots again. You can hear the corner smoke over cheering every single one. Thirty-five seconds left in round number two, and the pace both rounds have been fought at. Stepping that left hook keeps connecting and a straight right from Smolkova. Brittany can't get out of the way of that. She won't lift her left hand up to block it. What a fight. Oh my goodness. Right. Great round. Great round. Great round. Veronica heard the crap crap of the 10 second bell and she started going forward. I love that. Yeah. That's a that's a smart thing to do. We just saw Harrison Rogers lean forward and give his nod of approval there. And time at time again, we have seen, we have seen Veronica Smolkova in what could be classed as fight of the night, both with Serena Torre, then also with Yanti, uh, Kayla Yantif. 
And again, she's putting it on here with uh, Brittany Cloudy. Yeah, I'm trying to think, you know, this is awesome as a fan to watch a person, you know, have those kind of fights. But as fighters, we always wonder when you're that guy, that girl, constantly in those wars, that's going to add up after time. It's like, you almost don't, it's like, it's proud to be known as that person, but you don't really want to be known as that person. <laughs> you don't want to have to use that every fight. Yeah, yeah don't lean on it all day like, oh, every, every night's a fight of the night. You're like, ah, I'd like a few easy ones. <laughs> Third and final round here, our opening bout of the night, this semi-final for the women's Bantamweight Grand Prix. I love to see, again, the same thing, the start of the third round, start of the last round. How does the fighter come out? What do they do? Do they come out strong and aggressive right away? Do they kind of bounce around a little bit? I feel like Brittany's coming forward more now. Because you coach as well now, right, Benson? And, and when you're in the corner and say you see Veronica Smolkova finish with some big shots, eye-catching shots like that, is that the case? You've got to get the momentum and the judges' eyes back on you? For sure. You want to tell them from a judging aspect, hey, we need to have this a strong statement at the beginning of the round, a strong statement at the end of the oh, round. Oh, my goodness. That was a beautiful right hand right under. Both ladies absolutely leaving it all inside this UFL cage. I, I'm, not, I'm just not liking uh, Brittany in the clinch, though. I don't like her initiating the clinch. It seems like she's landing that exchange. She just landed. She just won that exchange. But she initiated the clinch. Stay this range. Keep your boxing going. Don't clinch. You know, I think the reason why she's doing it is because she's a little too close when she finishes. And if she smothers her, she's not getting hit with those voracious left hooks and right hands that Veronica's throwing. Because for whatever reason, she's not using her height to get away. Yeah. She's not using her length to hey, I agree with you. She should be on the outside. But instead of like just being in the middle, she's her antidote is just, I'll just keep coming all the way forward and smother her. I would like to see right here some more kicks or some knees uh, from Brittany. She has her hands up hard. Her, uh, Veronica's guard so high. There it is, body shot. There you go. She opens up with the Finally a nice block low. with that left hand, too. Close frame. Just too many times I've seen uh, Brittany just take a powerful. Oh, my goodness. Veronica doesn't want to wait too long to get going. She yeah, knows really. This is the third round. It's a close fight. Don't wait too long to where you lose, lose the, this third pivotal round. I went for that leg trip again on the outside. Three minutes, 20 I was just seconds. Thinking the same thing, man. Benson, that, that she's relaxing and maybe biting her. I'm like, okay, gained your win, but you're waiting so long that you're going to be mathematically, unless yeah. you get the knockout, you're not going to be able to win this round. And right. it's a close fight. No, it's a close right. fight, this, but right now, the fight, this round's going to decide the fight. And so far, Brittany's winner. She's landing the shots. Yeah, nice Even the Two posture elbows. of Veronica has been backing up, look, defense, holding her hands up. Yeah. It's like, the referees, the judges are looking at that. Boy, there we go. We talked about Brittany dropping to single shots in round number two. It's now the opposite way around. It's Veronica just sitting looking to counter. Oh, and again, bringing straight shots down the pipe. Good inside kick. I think I've seen uh, maybe eight or nine pretty good teeps so far. A uh, good check, good defense on those teeps, but no one has kicked off those teeps. No one has fired off those checks. You got to fire off them as well. Good defense, what to check it, what to block it. They got fire off. Balance at the moment, it's a perfect opportunity. They're standing on one leg, there it is. Two minutes, 10 seconds of round number three. That clock is ticking. Very much feels like Brittany Claudia has come out looking to take the momentum in this third and final round. Yeah, she took some punishment from Veronica in that second round. But I mean, Veronica, I think, might have uh, expended her, her energy. So far from what I've seen in this third round, we haven't seen anything what we really saw in that second round. And that might be all she had. Good knee to the body from uh, Brittany. Yeah, that gas tank from Veronica is getting, getting pretty low. The ladies will have their eyes on our nice win. Our second bantamweight bat, that will be Zurina Toure taking on Claire Guthrie. Only 25 seconds now. Now she's pushing forward. You'd argue she's got to look for the finish now, Smolkova, right? If you're her a coach, you got to be telling that. If you're the coach, you got to say, hey, we, get, we need it now. You got a minute left. We need something big. And if I was British coach, I'm not saying, hey, you got this round one. If she lands, if Veronica goes on another flurry where she lands four or five head rocking back shots, it could steal the round for her. 
inside the high line now, 49 seconds left. I love that jab. Oh, that, that jab she has been using from the beginning of the fight to the uh, yes. third round here at the end of the fight. She's still using Look that jab. Look at the head movement. It's level changing. Now she's blocking. Oh, Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. That's it. Double unders. <laughs> Actually, I think if the finish is smothered against the cage here, I think Brittany won this fight. I like the Veronica's defense here. The, the leg up, her knee. We call China Wall. You guys yeah. say but the only thing is that you're stuck there. You're not yeah. moving. It's you definitely just defense, a, but you're stuck there. Yep. Oh, just missing that elbow over the top. There Time we go. Time to improve your position, right? Yeah. <laughs> Three rounds in the books there. Hats off to both ladies. What great a way fight. to kick it off, right? Wow. What a way to kick That's off UFL right 3. That's a great start right there tonight. And what we've seen from these UFL 1 and 2, now moving into 3, is how much these fighters want it, these Grand Prix fighters. The, the, the fact you know who you could be facing, the fact there's a belt at the end of the line, it's really motivating these fighters. And Benson, you know it, gold really does sit in your mind. It can be the fact that it helps you get out of bed, do the work, the grind that makes you into a champion, right? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. No, seeing that end result, seeing that uh, their goal right there, seeing that belt, knowing you're going to be the inaugural champion for the UFL, it's a big deal. Veronica Smolka over there with the Slovakian flags on her shoulders. And again, she is a fan favorite here at UFL. Already made so many fans through her performances. An outstanding battle between these two. We'll go to the judges' scorecards. And the thing that they'll take away from this is they, they both left it all in there, right? It's, it'll be worse if you lose and you go back to the hotel room knowing you could have given more, but they gave everything. Ah, yeah. oh, for sure, I totally agreed. Uh, bo both ladies going back to the hotel, looking at this fight later tonight when they watch this fight, they can know that, hey, I left it all out there. I, I did everything I could. Uh, they should be proud of their performance tonight. Win, win, lose, or draw, they should be proud of this performance. So we are just awaiting the judges' scorecards. Our referee will pull them together. We will find out who is our first finalist, who will be the first person that will step forward to December 16th. That was a finals day here at UFL. That is when the first, the inaugural UFL titles will be on the line. And the judges here at UFL 3 will be the ones to decide this one. Always gets me a little itchy when it takes a little longer for the scorecards yeah, to come every in, time. Right? It, it always feels like it takes the, the longest two minutes, three minutes of my life. <laughs> it was always when they're reading the scorecards. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so both ladies there. Oh, here we go. Frank Mir just came over to us and said, what, what if it's a draw? <laughs> Don't throw spanners in the work, Frank Mir. Come on. And again, you can keep up with all the action at United Fight League on Instagram. Follow us, we, we've got some exciting news coming up. And of course, tonight we will find out the finalists. Tonight we'll find out the finalists in all of the divisions who will go forward to December 16th to buy it out for that gold right here in Mesa, Arizona. We'll be back here at the Legacy Park December 16th. It's gotta be nice having this show on your doorstep, right, Benson? Oh, I love that. Be able to drive to the venue, wake up in your own bed, drive Eat to the Eat your own food, is, yeah. yeah. But it looks like the scores are in. The fighters are being brought together, so let's wait no more. Let's hand it right now to the man with the mic, Mr. Michael Vale. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. And all three judges, Sean Dallas Hall, Eric Curcio, and Greta Cox, scored about the same 29-28 for your winner by unanimous decision. And now moves on to the finals of the UFL Bantamweight Grand Prix Tournament. Brittany Quiestorm Cloudy. Brittany Cloudy claiming that first spot in the December 16th finals. Thank Great you. respect between the two, the fighters and the corners. Brittany will now speak to our one and only Frank Mir. Was that the game plan, just to come out with that kind of intensity right off the bat? Yeah, that was the plan. I needed to 
make sure I came out with the intention like I was going to stay in her face and she met me with that same <laughs> energy so I appreciate her we definitely had a nice hard three rounds that was a war in fact first round I had you winning second round you were in trouble Veronica fought back some voracious shots what did you do to make sure you turned it around in the third round to put it away? Oh, yeah. I mean, I listened to my coaches and my corner man. They told me, like, you know, I'm, she had that round. I needed to come out here and show how much I wanted it, and I really needed to dig deep. And so I, I focused on the words, and I came out here, and I gave it all I had. Anybody you'd like to thank? Oh, man, I want to thank, you know, my whole team, everyone who's made sacrifices to support me in this, all my sponsors, my family and friends. Like, it really truly takes a village, and everyone that has, you know, extended words of just advice and love or helped me out through Kim's, like, I appreciate everyone that helps allow me to continue to chase my dream. Congratulations. Moving on to the tournament, Brittany Cloudy!